some candied apples here, some cupcakes, some blueberry and strawberry tart, and my personal, personal favorite, good old pumpkin pie. <laughs> Don't forget that anything purchased at this bake sale for this Harvest Festival will be going to our friends at the library to help renovate the children's department and get some more books in there to spread the joy of reading. Let's start the video. My cat, Allball, helped me draw out some sketches and come up with the idea for this bake sale. The main concept is that the friends of the library have gotten together with the bakery and we are going to do a bake sale so we can raise money for the books in the children's department because it is sorely lacking in there and it's it, it needs some help. So we're going to be selling some baked goods and all of the money is going to go to the kids department of the town library. So we're just going to use one of the large library tables. I wanted it to have an antique look. So I am using completely hand tools to do this because I wanted to show you guys a different way to do it besides using like my Dremel or anything. So these are just hand files I got from the hardware store and some craft wood that you can get at places like Michael's or Joann's. And then I am cutting out all the pieces, just filing them by hand and gluing them together. make like grass and dirt and everything but I wanted it to have some kind of a backdrop so I'm making a wooden fence to go behind the table and that'll just give us a little hint that we're outdoors without me making a whole orchard although we can talk about that in the next video. a bake sale sign so people know what's going on over here and that they can buy their pumpkin pies or their apple pies or their cupcakes or what have you here. I'm using cardstock paper that I printed out and then I glued that over some thread. So the table and the backdrop look pretty good. Let's move on to making some actual pastries to go on this. For the first pastry, I am making a little fruit tart and I'm using polymer clay to first make the tart and then I'm going to make a mold of that and use air dried clay for the actual tart itself. I've done this with polymer clay and I also did it with air dry epoxy clay and both times came out pretty much exactly the same but I did think it was nicer with the polymer clay to bake it and then I didn't have to wait as long but if you don't have an oven or access to polymer clay or you're just looking for an all air dry solution you can actually make the thing out of air dry epoxy and then you can make a mold using that so you don't have to make it out of polymer clay but I use polymer clay because I had some and then I am using air dry clay to push into the molds. And the thing that I love the most about this air dry clay for food is that I can paint the air dry clay so easily. I can do like a watercolor. I can do like different effects. I can make it very opaque, transparent, whatever. And I don't feel like I can do the same thing with polymer clay. It just always looks really like the paint is just sitting on top of the clay to me. So that is the thing that won me over the most for building all of the food out of air dry clay. We need 
need some kind of display to show this tart. Right now, it's just gonna be sitting like bare on the table and I don't like that. So I'm making a cake stand. That way we can start decorating up this table and get some people buying these baked goods so we can finally have books in the library. I wanted to do another one, but I wanted to change it a little bit. So I'm doing a peach tart. I really just saw like pictures of peach tarts on Pinterest. And honestly, all of the food research that I was doing online was making me just crave like every baked good. This kind of happened with my Kiki's delivery service bakery thing too, where I was like getting extremely influenced by all of the food I was researching. So once again, I made the original out of polymer clay and then made a mold of it. And then I used some air dried clay to press into the mold and I started painting it while it was almost dry, not completely dry. And that's honestly just because it didn't matter to me whether it was dry or not before I started painting. And the beautiful thing about this air dried clay is that you can paint it at any stage. And the air dried clay that I'm using is called Cosmo. Um, actually, let me show you guys really quick uh, what that looks like so you have an idea. Hold on. So this is the air dry clay that I got from Amazon and it's all in Japanese. <laughs> so I can't tell you what the instructions here say. It's resin clay by Nishin Associates and um, it's new. <laughs> that is the only part that's in English. And this basically dries like rock hard. It's like polymer clay, except you don't have to bake it. It really feels almost the same when it's done, except that I also feel like this has a better like texture to it. It's really hard to describe unless you just kind of pick some up and see for yourself. But what it does that's a lot different than the polymer clay is that when you're painting it, it absorbs the paint like really easily, which is the part I like the most about it. some candied apples now and I'm just gonna use the clay itself and then shape that into the shape of some mini apples on the ends of these toothpicks and the toothpicks are just so it'll be easier to paint um, because you can see they're so tiny like it would be a nightmare trying to hold on to them and paint at the same time and then I'm also using some toothpicks that I've kind of sharpened down into smaller points to be the sticks sticking out of the candied apples I made the caramel out of Let's Resin UV Resin. The link will be in the description box. I had an interesting time trying to make these cupcakes. There were a lot of tutorials online of different ways that people do it. And honestly, I feel like <laughs> they all make it look way easier than it actually is. So I decided to do the same thing that I did with the um, tarts and make them make all of the different parts out of polymer clay and then make molds of it. Oh, let me show you guys the stuff that I use for the molds. This is the mold stuff that I used. <coughs> this is the stuff that I used to make the molds. And this is called Amazing Mold Putty. Um, it's a two part, Woo! it's two parts and you mix equal amounts of each part together. You mold it over the thing that you want to make a mold of and you let it sit for like 20 to 30 minutes and then you have a mold. 
When I made this mold of the cupcake, it was a little bit deeper, so I decided to cut the mold in half to make it easier to remove the cupcake. The reason I did this is because I wanted to make a lot of cupcakes and I didn't want to wait for them to dry inside of the mold, which could take a few hours and then have to come back and do one at a time that way. So cutting it in half made it easier for me to pop out the cupcakes while they were still pretty much wet. And then that just made it easier to do a lot of these because I wanted to crank them out and get this video done for you guys. icing was a little bit of a struggle as well. The mold didn't do the best job with the icing, um, but it did better than when I tried to actually pipe the icing by hand. I definitely saw like <laughs> some Pinterests or things like that where they make it seem insanely easy to make cupcakes. And I just want you to know that you can still struggle to make, make cupcakes out of out of clay um, and here's the fruit so there you go if you're having trouble don't feel like you're alone because I had trouble too I made some displays and added in the candied apples and the cupcakes and then I'm adding those to the table also had trouble with the cookies. For the longest time, I didn't know how to do them. I tried to sculpt each individual cookie. Then I tried to make a miniature cookie cutter and slice those out, which kind of worked, but it wasn't as detailed as I wanted. And in the end, I still just came back to making a mold. I feel like the molds gave me the results that I wanted better than any of the other ways that I saw to do it. So I made molds um, so I made polymer clay cookies the same way that I did everything else except obviously they're cookie shaped. Baked that and then made a mold of it and then put the air dry clay into those molds to make a bunch of cookies. I was thinking the table looked pretty good, it had a lot of variety, but I just wanted more pies. So I kind of spur of the moment decided to do this pumpkin pie and I... Since it was so spur of the moment, I wasn't even sure how to do it. In the end, I had a mold of just the bottom of a pie because I was originally thinking I would do like some pie tins or something. And I stuck some clay into that and then cut out a piece of darker brown clay and push that down into the middle. And by this point, I had completely folded to the subliminal cake buying message I had been sending myself. And I got some pumpkin pie from Costco, which is the best pumpkin pie I've ever had in my life. No, Alba. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, also that happened. <laughs> Bake sale is almost complete, but before I show you guys the finished product, I just want to say a huge shout out to my patrons, my tier three patrons, 
Ashley A, Explosive Runes, Ash, Lori Richardson, Lisa, Walter, and Fred. Thank you guys so much. And this month, I'm shouting out all of my patrons here because I didn't have a lot of updates for you guys and I wanted to make it up to you. And I really appreciate your support on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.